while I'm waiting for that, let me say a couple of things. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to be here and present to you. Um, it's exciting for me to come to IFPRI. I am a big, big fan of IFPRI and I'm a big, big fan of data. And, and it goes back to a time when I used to work in Malawi. In, I started working in Malawi about 1998 in the statistics office. And I met there a fellow, some of you may know him, uh, called Todd Benson. Anybody know Todd Benson? Yeah. Hands up. Oh, you all know Todd Benson. He's a super guy. Um, and he had a project, and I've brought the results of that project today just to show you. Uh, you may have this in your library or even on your desk, I hope. Uh, but this is a social statistics atlas of Malawi done by IFPRI in conjunction with the statistics. I think this is terrific. Uh, and what he did, and it did, took him some pain to do it because I was there and I witnessed it. He went around various government ministries, various government agencies, and he took all the data sets he could find and he mashed them up and put them into this wonderful publication. You have things on crop production, you have population density, you even got poverty mapping in here. And it was a terrific addition to the knowledge that we have about Malawi. Now, I think my first message is that open data would help do things like this in more places more easily. And I think if you ask Todd, what did it take to do this? He'd tell you an awful lot of driving around, an awful lot of asking, an awful lot of digging in archives. So my first thing is just to say that um, I think IFPRI is terrific, and I think this kind of thing is, is also excellent. So that's my start. Um, what I thought I'd do as a kind of way of introduction to, to open data is give you the top 10 things that I think we've learned at the World Bank as a result of our open data initiative. So that's really uh, what I wanted to do. I'm going to be quick. I'm not timed. I, I think I have the, uh, they've given me a pass on timing my talk. I think everybody else is going to be timed, or most people. Uh, but I'm not going to take longer than five minutes anyway. But my first lesson is uh, give, give them what they want. Give them fast and easy access to data. Uh, before we launched our Open Data Initiative, we used to have really um, good but very complicated tools to get at, to get at the data. Very nicely designed, and, and, but rather heavy uh, data access tools. Very good for the geeks, and there's probably a lot of geeks in this room, I'm guessing, uh, but not too good for the general public. So the first thing we did was try to give them fast, easy access, and that's my first lesson. Second lesson, don't start with the hard stuff. Um, this is not my office. This is, um, maybe it was my office in Malawi. Um, but I, th and I think in Malawi you'd find a lot of this kind of thing. Um, but don't start with the stuff that's hard to open. Uh, we started with this, which is World Development Indicators, which I'm also responsible for, which is a data set which has been curated over the last, I don't know, 20, 30 years probably. Um, and so we've got good experience with it, we've got good metadata, we've got uh, uh, good systems for making sure that's, that's uh, reasonably comparable between countries. And, we, and so we started with that data set. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why the bank's open data initiative was, was, was good. Third lesson. Um, I hope by now, if you've been to the conference on open data and agriculture, you know some of this. Uh, but open data is unreal and hot. Now, I'm a statistician by training, uh, and in fact by trade. Uh, I have two sons, one who's 16 and one who's 20. And uh, when I try to explain to them what I do, I say to them, I'm a statistician, I do lots of data work, I work with spreadsheets. They look at my computer and they say, Dad, I'm sorry, but that's really boring. <laughs> it's not, you, you must have a really boring job. And so this tweet is my favorite tweet of all time. Time. Because once we launched open data, uh, this guy from, I think, uh, who, who observes the US government, he tweeted that the open data's, were, uh, the World Bank's open data initiative was unreal and hot. So I took this home and said, look, this is what I do, and it's unreal and hot. Uh, so, uh, I, so third lesson, open, open, data, open data is good for you. Uh, fourth lesson, um, we heard this not long ago. This is, uh, anybody know this guy? Bono. Very famous uh, rock star and uh, poverty activist. Um, and he came to the World Bank and he was asked, uh, one of the first questions he was asked, it was a conversation with Jim Kim, uh, and he was asked, what will it take uh, to turbocharge the fight against poverty? And I think we were all pretty astonished. The words that came out of his mouth, open data is what he said. And he was interested in it from two angles. One, because it helps uh, design more effective and better programs. Uh, and policies. Uh, but secondly, he was also talking about the transparency angle. Transparency helps to hold us all to account and, and helps uh, governments deliver services better. It helps citizens engage better. So that's my fourth lesson. Data can really turbocharge the fight against poverty. My fifth lesson. 
Uh, and this is very close to my heart because I'm, the ma I was the ma I'm still a manager of a team which deals with, with data. Uh, free data, open data, it's not free, uh, despite what you might have heard. Uh, we used to make about $3 million from se selling just the data set for world development indicators alone. Now that, that $3 million was used to pay the people in my team to create that data set. Uh, but this is what happened after we launched open data. Our revenues fell. And our investment costs, at least initially, have been going up. So we've had to find money, uh, and we've had to lose money. Now, I, I think that's, a, that's, that's something to bear in mind, but my uh, sixth lesson is that, in fact, opening your data is actually good for your business. Um, and it's certainly been good for my business. I've had a much easier time when I go to, to budget discussions to argue for the benefits of data since we've launched open data. This is a trend of uh, weekly visits to data.worldbank.org since we launched uh, on, on the left-hand side in April 2010 to last week. Uh, when we launched, we had 100,000 visitors a week, more or less, and we thought that was astronomical. We've never, we'd never seen anything like that. Uh, we would think, you know, sort of 10,000, 15,000 users through our paid database would have been quite high. Um, last week, we had 400,000 visitors, which is an astonishingly uh, large number in comparison to what we have. That accounts for about 25%. Uh, just the English side accounts for 25% of all traffic that comes to the World Bank website. Um, Fourth in the list of pop most popular sites at the World Bank is the Spanish version of data.worldbank.org, and I'll come to that in a minute. Um, so, although it's expensive, data is good for you, good for your business. Now, my seventh and eighth points are related. Um, the first one is be technically open. Um, so, this is what I think is good practice, and then not so good practice on the right-hand side. Um, so, all those um, kind of maybe familiar uh, technical extensions to, to files, TXT, CSV, XML, uh, HTML. Uh, th those are ways in which you can uh, make your data available with non-proprietary formats. Uh, not so good, putting data out in PDF uh, and other proprietary formats, so, so watch out for that. We still see in the bank, sometimes this happens, and we try to pounce on that whenever we see that. Uh, but just as important maybe as being technically open is being legally open. Um, and one of the things we learned very quick, quickly at the bank was that it's very important to have very clear terms of use to encourage people to reuse the data that you have. Uh, don't just put it out there and hope that people will understand the terms under which they're using those data sets. So not so legally open are subscriptions, restrictions on commercial use, for example. We see a lot of that sometimes, particularly from researchers. Uh, they say, well, it's okay if, if an academic uses it, but not okay if another commercial institution uses it. And I think we should try to avoid that where we can. Eighth lesson, label your stuff. Uh, these are, these are tin cans, but you've got no idea what's in them, I guess. So what you need are labels. Um, I think in the statistics and data world, we call that metadata. Uh, so try to make your data clear, make it clear what's in it. Um, spreadsheets are a good way of disseminating data, uh, but not so good if they're not clearly labeled. And again, researchers, and I suspect there are quite a few of you that are researchers, we're not too good at that uh, sometimes. We like kind of these very, uh, you know, labels like, uh, I don't know, pov dot that or whatever, some, some very complicated label. So try to label your stuff clearly. Nine, um, be open to new engagement. And this is perhaps one of the most difficult things we've, we've uh, had to, had to in, in terms of how we've had to change our model. Um, so in the past, we used to put our data out, people used to pay for it, and we used to hope that they'd use it. And now we're trying to be much more proactive about, about reaching out to new communities in the way that they use data. This, uh, these slide, these set of pictures show some slides from a competition we ran a couple of years ago called Apps for Development. All we did was say, here's our data set, it's free, it's open, these are the terms of use. If you can create a, an app for your computer, for a mobile phone, or for a tablet, uh, which helps to solve uh, it helps to take the world, world closer towards the MDGs, we will give you a prize. We had, I think, over 100 entrants, uh, more from Africa than anywhere else, which I think shows you the value of something like that. And my last lessons, uh, the, the point about opening for new engagement is that other people can do things better than you can. 
And that's another tough lesson. That's another thing which is quite difficult to change in an institution, uh, the recognition of that. So we have a very nice search engine at the World Bank on our website, and we spend a lot of money on that. Um, but it's nothing like Google search engine. So what you want to be, where you want to be is in Google search engine, right? Not in the bank search engine. So now if you type in external debt in, of Tanzania into Google search engine, you get a result which comes from the World Bank's database. Now, why does that happen? Because we're open, because, because Google is able to share that data set and include it into its own search engine. You know what, if you do that in Bahasa, it works too, because Google's a multinational company. Now, I, I think languages are very important to reach a global audience like we, we need to. Um, and we've translated a lot of our data sets into languages. But you know what, we haven't done Bahasa yet. But Google has, because there's a huge audience for Google in Indonesia. Um, so. Others can do it better. And of course, who knows this guy? You all know Bono, right? He was the rock star. But this guy is also a rock star. This is uh, Hans Rosling. Uh, Hans Rosling, who's a kind of data, data rock star. Uh, and what he says is that you people at the World Bank and you people at IFPRI, uh, you're the composers of, of the music. But I'm, the mu I'm a mu musician. I can help you play that music so that I can reach new audiences. And of course, my final thought is that open data is all about reaching people like this. It's a, we, we we need to make our data open, openly accessible in both legally and, and, and technical ways so that we can, we can uh, really have some benefit on the ground. And so my closing thought is that open data is a public good for the public good. So thank you very much. <laughs>